Hey guys, Uncommon Ramen here uh, with another episode of Gaming on the Go. Today we're going to take a look at One Deck Dungeon in lieu of the fact that uh, One Deck Dungeon's expansion, I think it's called Forest of Shadows, should be shipping pretty soon here. Uh, so I do want I do want to do a, a quick run through of the first game, and then obviously I'll be doing an unboxing of Forest of Shadows. So, One Deck Dungeon, you're actually going to be delving into a dungeon that consists of a deck. Ha! <laughs> Go figure. Um, first thing you're going to do is pick the dungeon that you want to delve into. Um, and the dungeons are um, separated by difficulty. So, when you see up here in the upper right hand corner the one dot, you'll notice right here, and it's really hard to see, but there's two dots. The more dots there are, the more difficult the dungeon. Sorry about that. Um, so Minotaur's Maze is Minotaur's Maze and Lich's Tomb are the harder ones. Um, I'm gonna pick Dragon's Cave because it's easiest. Um, you're gonna take that and you're gonna put it so that it's under your turn reference sheet with the first floor showing. This first floor is a um, a challenge that, that doesn't go away essentially so whenever you have a trap challenge you have to do this as well and whenever you have a monster challenge you have to do this as well otherwise suffer the consequences not to mention you have to do this white box uh, the first turn on each floor so the first turn of this floor you're gonna have to mill the deck uh, five times <clears throat> so the, the hourglass is time being spent and that's a big part of this game um, you're going to be spending time searching, you're going to be spending time refreshing doors, you're going to be spending time going through doors, um, and basically the spending time is just basically taking two cards from your deck and putting them into your discard pile. Right here it says you have to spend an extra five time before your first uh, turn on each floor. So be really careful about that, and I'll kind of show you why. <clears throat> your deck is just a normal, um, it's a little over 60 cards, I think. Could be wrong. But, um, yeah, once you finish shuffling this, you're going to take a stairs card, the one to two player side. There is actually a four player side because there's a four player variant, but I know nothing about it. Um, and you're going to put it on the bottom of the deck. And once you've milled through or drawn all the cards, you're going to, that will end up being revealed and it denotes when you move on to the second floor of your dungeon. And as you move on to the next floor, the, uh, dun the, the challenges become uh, harder. Especially right here, where you have to have ten swords. And we'll go over that. Floor three, <coughs> ten swords, doesn't seem like that big of a deal, but, well, I mean, I guess it, it, from a, from a standpoint when you know nothing about the game, it does seem like it, but as you play, as you play it, you'll see that it's not that bad. Um, you're also going to want to set your level. Um, you're going to start at level one. This card just tells you what you are allowed at level one, so you're going to be able to equip one item and two skills, which I'll show. Um, you'll also receive one potion uh, no encounter bonuses, and it only takes 6 XP to level up, and all of this I'll, I'll go over. Um, encounter bonuses are extra black die that you get to use, and I believe from everything that I've read that these are cumulative, so if you earned one right here, you when you move up to level 3, you'll earn another, not just the one previously, so you'll actually have two, and then a total of four, I believe. I can't find anywhere in the rules that says otherwise. <clears throat> so that's how the leveling up works. And again, you're going to pick for the solo game, the one player side, there is a uh, two player side as well. And obviously as you level up, the number of items and skills that you can uh, acquire become larger. So it is beneficial, especially as you're delving deeper into the dungeon to make sure you level up. You also want to choose your character. Um, these also have a one-player and a two-player side. Um, I don't know anything about the two-player game right now, and I have not played it. Um, but the one-player side, they're going to give you a little extra bonuses because um, 
well, it's difficult to play by yourself. Uh, you're also going to have a heroic feat. The heroic feat, as far as I can tell from what I read in the rulebook, can be used uh, every encounter, but only once per encounter. Um, and you're also going to have a starting skill. Um, and each of them have a starting skill. You can Im improve upon these skills as you go through. Um, each of them have their own strengths, like for instance, uh, this one is heavy magic and melee, but not very quick, and also has a lot of HP. This one is kind of your well-rounded jack-of-all-trades, um, but much faster than most heroes. Uh, most health, um, very heavy combat, uh, not so good in the other categories. Your fastest hero, um, but not so good in the other categories. And your best magic, and again, not so good in the other categories. <laughs> Sorry guys, I'm sick, just so you know with all the sniffling and the coughing and all that fun stuff. <clears throat> so let's go over a turn really quick. <coughs> so in a turn, um, especially on the first turn, the first thing you're going to do is spend two time, which like I said, is just discarding two cards off the top of the deck and then exploring uh, because we don't have any doors available to us. And that's just going to, you're just going to take the top cards of the deck and fill up all of the explore spots. There should be four of them. So your table looks like that. Um, sometimes you'll only fill up certain ones depending on if you've chosen to run away from a, uh, a door or encounter it. So after you've gone through exploring, that's right, you have to spend two more time, so discard two cards, to open one of the doors. And you'll just basically pick a door and be like, okay, look, we're going to face a shadow. And this is the point where you choose to either encounter it or run away. If you ran away, you would just simply put the card back where it was, spend two more time, and open up another door. But let's go through an encounter really quick so we can look at uh, what all of this iconography means. So the top corner here in the right, um, these little blue lanterns, that is your XP, and that is going to usually only be applic applicable once you loot the card. Um, but there are some instances where XP is counted prior to the encounter. This part right here in the left corner basically tells you that it's a monster encounter. Um, these little symbols on the side are uh, applicable if you choose to loot the card as items. Down here, the little uh, tan banner is if you choose to uh, loot the card as a skill, or in this case, as a potion, which I'll show you. Um, this white banner above all of these boxes is an ability that the shadow has. Um, it'll happen uh, whenever you trigger it. So in this case, you're going to spend a time for each skill you use. And again, these tan banners are the skills. And each hero, like I mentioned earlier, uh, has their own default uh, banner. So if I were to use this skill during this encounter, I'd have to spend one time. And again, that's just discarding the top card of the deck. Um, these boxes down below here are the challenge boxes, and originally I had shown you over on the dungeon, um, when you choose it, that there's a challenge box here. So if I was to encounter this shadow, I would also have to complete this encounter box as well. So when I roll my dice, the cumulative dice that I've, uh, uh, picked up throughout the delve of the dungeon, or in this particular case, because I'm starting out as a level one, this is the first door, my default dice, so let's assume that I'm playing uh, the archer, um, I would be rolling two yellow die, three pink die, and two blue die. This is only applied to monster encounters. During trap encounters, they have different rules about which dice you get to roll, but during a monster encounter, you're going to roll all of the dice available in your pool, and then you're going to apply it as you can. Um, and I'd have to find a way to get a 3 yellow, a 5 yellow, a 3 blue, a 4 blue, a 5 blue, and a total cumulative value of a 10 in pink. Um, and what the long box means is that <clears throat> you can use as many die of that color or of the black color um, to create that cumulative value of 10. So if you had two fives, you could use uh, two dice to cover that box. 
Um, the one rule about black dice is that they cannot be used um, alone in a cumulative value area. So if I was to put two black fives here on that pink 10, um, it wouldn't count. I'd have to have it accompanied by at least one pink die. I believe that's the case. You can, however, use the black die to cover up these single spaces. The green shield means that I have to cover up this space first before I cover any other spaces here, uh, which means that if I did not get that cumulative uh, 10 um, in pink, then I would not be able to cover any of these other spots even if I had the dice available to do so. So you gotta cover the green shields first, and then you'll slowly but surely cover each one of these uh, with dice that are equal value or greater than the value showing. So uh, a five or six in yellow, a five or six in blue, a four, five, and six in blue, a three, four, five, and six in blue, and then a three, four, five, and six in yellow. Any of those will work. And then of course, obviously the subsequent uh, black die. Um, Assuming that I'm able to cover all the boxes, um, the monster is defeated, and then I can choose to loot the card. If I was to loot it as an item, I'd simply put it under my player sheet like this, and now I've increased my HP, and I've also increased uh, the number of yellow dice that I get to roll during an encounter. I can also choose to loot the card as a skill. This is not a skill, this is a potion, but for, for the sake of showing you um, where you would put it, this is where all your skills would continue to go as you uh, grab them. But in the case of this card, because it's a potion, you actually start with a default potion, which uh, if you look at your level card, you also start with a default potion token. Um, so during the game, you can use this potion that's on the uh, turn reference card. As you let go through the uh, dungeon and you loot things, you may get more potions, which you'll just simply stack under it just like you would stack under the uh, character sheet with skills. And it just adds different potions that you can use. So now I can use the healing potion and the heroism potion. If I choose to loot it for the uh, experience points, which are these lanterns, I'm just basically going to take it and put it underneath the um, level card and keep track of how many lanterns I have there. As soon as I have six or more lanterns, I can choose to discard all those cards, level up to the next level, and take the new benefits. Let's say I don't fill up all the boxes. You still technically defeat the monster. However, the monster is going to cause consequences to happen. So if I were to fill up all the boxes here except for this five yellow, now it means that I have to take one damage and lose one time. And it works the same way with all these boxes because they're all the same. One damage, uh, one time, one damage, one time, one damage, one time. But let's take a look at the dungeon itself. Um, on here we have a two shield. That means that you have to fill that green space before you fill anything else. And that's for trap encounters. This one basically says I lose a life if I don't cover it. And then this is another shield. This one says I lose two life one life, and a shield. So you can see how they kind of differ and vary depending on the uh, encounter. Let's see if I can find a trap here. Here we go. So what's different about a trap encounter? Well first off you're going to see right off the bat that the icons on the side, the challenge boxes, are completely different. What this is basically saying is that you can either choose to dismantle it or climb over it. Whichever one you choose, you're only going to roll the dice that are available of that color in your pool. So if I was just my default character, I could choose to dismantle it, but I'd only roll two yellow dice, but I'd only have to get a six cumulatively. If I chose to climb over it, I would get three pink dice, but I'd also have to get an 11 cumulatively. Um, you'll also notice that if I choose to dismantle it, I also have to spend two time prior to doing so. And if I fail, I'm gonna lose three time and an HP, Whereas if I fail the climbing over it, I would only I would lose two time, but I or sorry I would lose two health, but I'd only lose two time, and I wouldn't have to spend the subsequent time prior to trying to dismantle it. Once you've chosen the dice and rolled them and either covered the box or failed, taken the consequences, you can choose to loot the room as well. In this case, uh, here's your item, which is the magic, um, your skill, and this is actually a skill versus a um, potion the XP. Um, this skill basically says that you can uh, trade in one of your yellow dice uh, to gain a six in yellow. 
So if you rolled a one yellow and you can't find anywhere to put it, um, then you can actually just trade it in to turn it into a six yellow. And usually that's a lot better, but you never know. Um, there are a ton of different encounters that you can uh, run into. And if you watch the unboxing video that I did for it, um, I go through them very quickly. But each one of them, for the most part, has this going, where it has an ability and then it's followed by a challenge box, with the exception of this guy, who is just plain strong. So assuming that throughout the dungeon, you've delved and successfully stayed alive, and you've made it through all the floors, and you made it to the stairs of the third floor, you're then going to move on to the boss. The boss works a little bit differently, and really quickly I'm going to show you some of these symbols in your heroic feet and skills, and you'll actually notice also in the potion section. The healing potion followed by the symbols right here basically say which encounters they can be used in. So this can be used in a monster encounter or a trap encounter. Kiting can be used in a monster encounter. Eagle Eye can be used in a monster encounter or a trap encounter, but not a boss encounter. So the monster encounter still counts. He's still a monster, but the heroic feat indicates that because he's a boss, you can't use your heroic feat. However, you can still use kiting and you can still use the healing potion. Um, the difference between a monster fight and a boss fight mo mostly is these boxes here with the skulls. Um, the monster is not going to take any damage um, until you cover those boxes. And um, the six hearts right there shows you how much HP he has. So he starts with six HP. You have to cover those boxes a total of six times uh, to kill him. And when I say a total of six times, I don't mean cover all three uh, on six different occasions. I mean, if you cover all three on the first time that you fight him, that counts as three hits. And then next time, if you cover all three, that counts as your other three hits, and therefore he's dead. Um, and it also says that black dice cannot be used to cover these skull boxes. So normally, if I had a black six available, I could use it there. But because his ability says otherwise, you're just going to have to use a natural pink six, a natural blue six, and a natural yellow six. And also, you have to be careful here because you have to fill these five pink uh, with the green shield first before you fill any of these, which means that if you don't have enough of the pink dice or you didn't roll well with your pink dice you could potentially just get thwomped and you'll notice here that if you don't cover these boxes completely then you're going to take four damage a piece from them so he hits like a truck but he is killable and if you plan for him basically knowing that he's got this little pink thing going on here and that you do need a lot of blue and, and yellow dice then you can essentially equip yourself well enough by the time you get to him to be able to have at least a relatively easy time uh, fighting him. That is the boss. Um, there are certain other things that you can do um, to make the game a little bit more fun, like the two-player game. Um, you can also add basic skills um, if you'd like, or you can do the campaign mode um, where you keep track of the times that you've played and how many times you've won and so on and so forth and make your character um, slowly but surely uh, better through the gaining of experience, essentially. But that is basically what One Deck Dungeon is. You're going to spend time to search rooms. I, I didn't go through what happens if you choose to... Um, run away from a challenge. If you choose to run away from a challenge, I did say earlier that you just put it back and that you'll have to spend two more time to um, open up another door. But let's say this is what your board looks like. You have two challenges here that you ran away from and you have two challenges that you opened and encountered and they're no longer there. And let's say you still don't find yourself in a position where you want, you, you feel like you can, um, take on these challenges without possibly dying, you can choose to spend two time and fill in the spots where there used to be doors 
and then spend the two extra time to open those doors as well, giving you extra options. However, if your board looks like this and you've run away from all of your challenges, then you're going to have to eventually just pick one and bite the bullet. Uh, it isn't an easy game. Um, I have gone into this with this character, I think on three separate occasions, and failed miserably. And I don't know if it's just because she only starts with one pink die, and there are a lot of, you know, pink related, you look at this, I need a lot of pink dice, I need a lot of pink dice. I don't necessarily need to do the pink challenge, but, you know, same with that. The thing is, uh, with her, what for whatever reason, I, I have lost more than I've won. And by saying I won, I mean I made it to the dragon, I didn't necessarily kill the dragon. In fact, the only character that I've ever actually killed the dragon with was this character. Um, and I've played this game dozens of times. Um, I killed the dragon twice with this character, and I've always made it to the dragon's lair with this character every time I've played with her. Um, not always killed the dragon, but made it there at least. And then I've also played as this character three times uh two times i made it to the dungeon or to the dragon and i and i died and one time i just didn't make it to the dungeon or dragon i just died i have not played um any of the other difficulties because i'm still having trouble getting through the the dragon um which is going to be interesting when the expansion comes out because i don't know if it's supposed to be more difficult but it definitely has newer mechanics like poisoning which should be interesting also, um, having gone through the rules briefly about the two-player game, it looks like an interesting game. Um, I suggest you play with somebody who uh, cooperates with you very well because it is still just as difficult. Because you'll look right here and you'll see um, very similar stats, but they're tailored a little bit because now you're playing with two different characters. So it's a lot easier to die. Notice three health versus the five here. Um, and also... They're not, they don't have one sword and one boot. So it, it's definitely looks interesting, but it looks also just as difficult. That is one deck dungeon. Um, I did go through the unboxing before, so I already showed you guys the dice, but here are the dice and the heart tokens. And originally, um, when I had done the unboxing, I was like, I don't know what these tokens are. These are your potion tokens. I don't know if you're limited to the six. Um, it didn't, at least from what I remember, that it didn't really say anything about that in the rule book. But uh, there are only six of them here, and you will be using your potions pretty often, so I, I assume you never really should have six. All right, this is a great game, by the way. It is in a tiny, tiny little box, so this fits with my, you know, fits inside your carry-on. Doesn't take up that much space, and. It's actually a relatively quick game, especially if you die really quickly. And you should assume that you're going to die a couple of times before you ever see the dragon. And hey, you might get lucky on your first try and get all the way to the dragon and maybe even beat him. But uh, I would challenge you to do that without cheating. <laughs> it is One player games, solo games, suffer from that small caveat where it is easy to cheat in those games because there's nobody besides yourself uh, kind of keeping tabs on what you're doing. Um, but I do think it detracts from the game, so I would suggest not doing it. Uh, but yeah. One Deck Dungeon, guys. Uh, from Chris Sieslik. The expansion, Forest of Shadows, will be shipping any day now. Um, yeah, if you like the video, Go ahead and like and subscribe. Uh, leave me a comment or two. Tell me what you think. Uh, maybe I missed something. Maybe I screwed up one of the rules. Maybe you have a question about the rules. Just let me know. Bye.